So you want to know what it's like to host your very own vintage toy show? This place is just so much. Yeah. So much to look at. Tim's over here talking me into muscle nuts. Dude, I mean, I find them, you know? I don't know. Oh my gosh. It's so awesome, man. <laughs> Bam, baby! That's the way you do it! It's awesome. What are your thoughts? It's awesome. I didn't think that, uh, you know, for a first show it would be this smooth and uh, everybody seems happy. No one's complaining. I'm getting yeah. uh, thumbs up from vendors. Yeah, yeah. So. All the vendors seem happy. It definitely <laughs> has to be bigger. Yeah, yeah. We're definitely going to have bigger. to grow. My friend Tim and I hosted our very first vintage toy show right here in Greenfield, Indiana. The event was called Hoosier Collecticon. And despite everything that could have gone wrong with a first time show, it was pretty magical. Packed with quality. Really good. Quality! <laughs> so the concept was simple, but very, very specific. Between the two of us, Tim and I attend dozens and dozens of toy shows every single year. About eight or nine months ago, we started casually discussing what we thought would make the perfect toy show. A few days later, we're checking out a venue, slapping down a deposit, and the rest is kind of history. Our idea, our angle, if you will, is that we wanted the entire show to be filled with nothing but vintage toys. The way we defined that was nothing released after the year 2000. That's where our passion lies. It's a reflection of us. We had limited space to work with, and we just wanted to kind of see if it could work. The entire thing was a proof of concept, a complete leap of faith for everyone involved. We didn't know if the community could support something like this, if they would want it. Vendors didn't know if it would be worth their time or their energy or their trouble to even come, travel, set up. But we all took a shot, and it was just beautiful. Any tiny minuscule problems or situations that needed tweaked, we've already started addressing those and those will be fixed for round two, which yes, there is a round two already in the works, which I'll talk more about that here at the end. But it was a vintage toy show, so of course I was selling some stuff. The what? I think, I mean, obviously I'll give you a deal, but I think it's 75. What is that, 110, how about uh, 90? What did you find you want to buy, Scott? Anything? He's marked at 25. Man, how many you got? Uh, no, looks like. Man, 11, I think. 11? Yeah. It's like 10 bucks worth. Deal. That's what we said on those, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 20 a piece. Yep, you got it. Inhumanoids? Uh, Metlar? No, we do not have Metlar. I haven't even seen him around here. I'm sure there's one somewhere, but yeah, I've not seen one. I mean, we would do the deal of a lifetime on this one. Let's hear it. Remember that monster okay. thing I sold you? I do. That was a good deal. 200. One. Okay. So as I'm sure you can tell by now, this video is going to be formatted a little bit differently than usual. I just really wanted to enjoy and experience the day. I tried to gather footage where I could, but there were times where it was just loud and crazy and chaotic and super busy. Next time, I'll probably hire someone to help me out with that. I'll wear a microphone. I'll try to make it more comprehensive. But for now, we're going to work with what we got. I do want to say that the part of the show I was probably looking forward to the most was just meeting new people. But to hear about some of the distances people traveled, some from clear across the country, hundreds, even thousands of miles away, some just to bring a gift of appreciation, some to tell me a story about what the channel means to them, it was completely humbling and by far my favorite part of the experience. Hey man. Hey man. Hey, uh, I'm a big fan. I, I awesome. came in from uh, Austin, Texas. Wow. Yeah. Well, so you know when you went and bought stuff from uh, uh, Danny Thompson? Yes. I commented on that video because I grew up listening to Sloppy Seconds. Sure. It's like one of my favorite bands. Danny commented back, and we've been friends ever That's since. That's awesome, man. So he's such a good guy. He's such a good dude. I drove down here to surprise him. Uh huh. And we've he shipped me a guitar. I've shipped him wow. stuff, and I drove down here. We're, I'm friends with his wife. This is my wife. Hi. Hi. Hi, I see and so anyway, so I, I, I drove down here, or we flew down here uh, and to just hang out with Danny and see yeah. his band. And then we saw that you were doing this. I was like, That's like, awesome, it, like two days before, I was like, oh. So anyway, I brought you this. This is no uh, way. I saw your your uh, video where you got the Chuck E. Cheese, mm -hmm. and you were like, well, I really prefer uh, stuff from uh, what's it called? So showbiz. Showbiz, yeah. Saying that out loud has really helped me out this weekend. <laughs> yeah, <really? laughs> I'll tell you that. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's amazing. Where's Tim? Um, <laughs> so. Uh, uh, 
I put a little piece of paper in there. It's got my YouTube channel on it. I don't okay. do um, I don't do toys or anything like yeah. that. I have this goofy channel where me and my best friend I go we go buy the weirdest stuff we can find and make each other eat it. Okay. And he's like he's like a super high end chef. Like uh -huh. he and so like I just buy him like the weirdest stuff. That's awesome. And he has no idea what it is until I, should, I, I he eats it. Wow. So uh, anyway, I put a little card. Okay, what's there it called? It's called Eats Unknown. Eats Unknown. Yeah. Okay. And so I don't want to shout or anything. I just if you like oh, it, subscribe to it. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate it, but <laughs> subscribe to it would mean a lot. You know, awesome, if, if it's you don't you don't need brain cells to watch it. Just you That's know, awesome. just turn it on when you're bored. So, so cool. Thank you so much, man. Hey, man. Thank, thank, thank you. I'm so happy you guys are putting this on. So Fun. Cool to meet you, man. And, awesome. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, this place is just so much. Yeah. So much to look at. at. But we have to be super careful because we only have one backpack. Right, right. She's yeah, already we... bought a bunch of VHS to put in yeah. it. <laughs> oh, I mean, there's a UPS down the street. You yeah, exactly. Out, so we can ship it out. So. Yes, thank you All so right. much. Thank, appreciate thank it. You, man. Appreciate it. Now, of course, at a show like this, the 1970s and 1980s were going to be highly represented with things like Star Wars and G.I. Joe, Transformers, Masters of the Universe, Thundercats, even into the 90s with things like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Personally, I was very excited to see plenty of gross-out stuff like Boglins and Garbage Pail Kids. But one thing I had my eye on was something from a couple decades earlier. You guys got some crazy stuff. I, I can't I can't believe the Garloo's still here. You know? Does it work? It does. Does it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so the small one goes for two fifty, the yeah. large one goes for six. I'm really tempted on that though, like the like Garloo? Said, yeah. I'm at six fifty. I I paid six for it. Can I show you that it works? Sure, go for it. Hold on the hands. Let me do the hands. <laughs> Look at that. That's so awesome. You know Kelly. Yeah. Hey, when did they make the Great Garloo? How old is this? 50? No, it's 60. 60? Okay. I'd say probably 64. Where's the commercial on YouTube? That's Pretty nice cool. example, right? Yeah, it is. That's cool. And the little one... It, what it's missing right. is the the, the, the back battery, back. the back to the battery. Oh, okay, just the yeah. plastic The part. little yeah. Garloo was on a monkey's episode. Uh -huh. Mickey and you was have selling them. I have a, it's on one of the cards, the monkey right. card. It's cool. Yeah. I'm buying it. Yeah. I like it. I'll take it. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. I've been, I've been looking at it the whole I time. Don't wanna, I don't want to. <laughs> I've been looking at it the whole time for sure. It's, you, you don't. Yeah. I think, because that's with both of them, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the medallion, too. That's hard to find. Yeah. The little one's cool. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Oh, my gosh. Always one of the great garlands. It's so awesome, man. I never knew they had a small one. And it comes with it. Yeah. That's it. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. Thank you much. so much, buddy. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank, and thank you again for being here. Yes, yeah. No, nice. we'll, we're coming back. Awesome, thank man. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. The 1961 Mark's Great Garloo. Now, there's lots of pieces out there that most would argue belong in any serious toy collection. And if I'm being honest, tons of those I don't necessarily care if I ever own. However, the Mark's Great Garloo, fully functional, good condition, complete, is something that I'm thrilled to add to the collection. A giant green robotic monster, of course that's right up my alley. And as if getting this guy for such an amazing price wasn't great enough, having the mini wind-up Son of Garloo included was just a crazy little bonus. Now, one thing I did learn immediately after buying the set is that the Son of Garloo originally came with a little pendant as well, which is definitely the hardest part to find on this guy. And it just so happened my buddy Bruce that was set up right across from me had been carrying around one of these for a long time, just in case he ever came across a Son of Garloo. Bruce was gracious enough to gift this to me just because he thought they belonged together. And to me, that's just another testament of how amazing this community really is. So one of my absolute favorite moments from the show happened when I was just out doing a little hunting and I heard a loud noise, which turned out to be a couple vendors having a friendly yet very animated negotiation over what I believe was a pretty high-end Star Wars piece. Really? 23 or 20? 23 or 20. Bam, let's do it. 
Uh, so you you flip it on call. <laughs> doing a major deal here. You should. You should Sounds do like it. I don't have a cord on me. You should film this for yourself. None of us can flip it yet. I don't have a cord. That froggy flip it. Yeah. There, it there, come yeah. on. Here you go. All right. It's in it. it's in the deal of the night. Sure. Who's calling? It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a three hundred dollars swing, dollar swing in our uh, in our favor or his. So do you do you have a cool one? Uh, give me that. Cool. I don't have. He's got. Oh Jesus Christ. <laughs> I bring. I just brought bills, man. Honeys. <laughs> this is why. This is uh, why he's called Froggy Flip. So yeah, that's right. Like Froggy 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 hold on. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Fine, you call it. Go. All right, you ready? Come you on, ready? let's go. Tails. Tails. <laughs> Bam, baby. That's the way you do it, right there. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Awesome. You're my man. Come here. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, it was for uh, the Fed and uh, and added. Woo! Nice. <laughs> that might be your, that might be your billion here. There you go. That's my uh, 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 opener right there. That's All right. Entire, I like it. <laughs> so I'm going to give you an overview of my entire haul here in just a minute. But real quick, I want to share with you something kind of cool that happened first thing in the morning before I even thought about turning on a camera. A couple years ago at the Great Ohio Toy Show, I met a vendor named Charlie who single-handedly ignited my obsession for muscle mutts. You were the one that made me obsessed with them. So, I do blame you. Okay, I, I think blame. <laughs> I remember that. We were lucky enough to have him set up at our show as well, and at about 5.30 in the morning when it was just he and I in the building, he comes walking over and plops this bad boy right on my table and says, hey, let's do a trade. He then proceeded to make a very, very modest pile of like two or three things, said, how's this? And I was like, yeah, man, take it. So now I'm able to add this third muscle mutt to my collection in just like six or eight months. But my run-in with muscle mutts did not stop there. As the show was starting to wind down, I had one more thing on my mind. First of all, how much is that? 100 bucks. 100 bucks. And then with the paperwork. what's on the mutts? I've asked you before, but I can't. I've got two grand on that mud. Two grand, okay. Now, I can talk to Bruce. Me and Bruce bought that together. Okay. So, I'm sure there's a there's a froggy deal somewhere to be made. <laughs> see what the froggy price is. Okay. Let me see. And then I can give you a better deal on that. He, That's he, cool. Hey, he needs the second cousin price. <laughs> second cousin. I forgot to second ask. Second cousin price. I forgot to ask. No, man. <laughs> That's he cool though. Be pretty good. He might get a first cut. Don't have like thirty freakies coming. Yeah, it's like a watch, like a sixteen hundred. Sixteen. And I'll say you that it cost what I paid for. What's that? I paid seventy bucks for that. So sixteen seventy. Because when I seen it. I was thinking Do you need me to make a run? Bucks easy, <laughs> yeah. I hadn't seen one. That's and then cool. I see they're only about 120 bucks. So I had I got toy sick. Alright. There's 15. Let me go get 170. All right, brother. Thank you, sir. Oh uh, yeah, I just had a Jeremy's thing. It's close enough. Close enough. Close yeah. enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tim's over here talking me into muscle nuts that, that dude, that, I mean, that I do find not need. them, you know. I don't know. I'm up to three loose, but I mean, I well, that's right up your alley. Yeah. I'm done with the Carter ones. Though. I had not I had not You know what he said when he bought the first one? He said, "I just need one." Yeah. I know. <laughs> he did. I remember it. I was there. <laughs> it's but, awesome. Yeah. That's the one. That's. The one. And this is cool. This Isn't that freaking awesome? Yeah. I'm freaking freakies. Thanks, bro. Thank Appreciate you very much. You, yep. Rocking, man. Thanks, Bruce. Appreciate it, guys. All right. That thing is freaking cool. I'm done buying today. I'm done. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Please don't drop that. So thanks to Rob and Bruce, I have my first and probably only carded muscle mutt. I've learned to never say never, but the fact that they can sometimes run up to three grand for a carded mutt probably shouldn't push my luck. Now this one is pretty interesting because there are a couple unusual variations to this. Charlie took a look at it, plus I sent some pictures over to King's Cave on Instagram, who, as far as I know, might have the biggest muscle mutt collection in the world. But he was able to actually track down the previous owners of this figure. It went through the hands of several different collectors and I think the story might be that they believe that this was a South American release. It's the exact same figure, just some slight variations to the uh, card and bubble. At the end of the day, 
Got myself a carded mutt, so I'm pretty happy. So like I said, show number two is already in the works. February 16th, 2025, right back at the Hancock County Fairgrounds in Greenfield, Indiana. This time we're going to have two buildings. It's going to be double the space, double the vendors, double the vintage toys. At this past show, we had these cool limited edition posters available. Going to be different surprises for this one. So if you want to keep up with things, I will link our Facebook page down below. Make sure you check it out, follow along, because that's where all the announcements are going to be and this channel and, and other things. But that one for sure. So just real quick before we get to the haul, I do want to say thank you to all the vendors. Thank you to everyone that came out. Thank you to everyone that watches the channel. You're the ones that make it possible that I can try new things, take some chances, and I am eternally grateful for that. The way we're going to keep Hoosier Collecticon growing and successful is to never treat it like a profit grab, never look at it as a way to subsidize our income or anything. This is purely a passion project for both Tim and I. Selfishly, it's even just kind of a way to build a fun playground right in our own backyards. Personally, I put every single dollar I made selling stuff back into the show by buying things from other vendors. I know Tim walked away with less than he walked in with, and all the money we actually made from the show itself just went to pay for the next show. So that's how we're going to keep doing it. Before signing off, I do want to give you an overview of the incredible haul I walked away with after a day of buying and selling and trading, along with some amazing gifts. Um, I can't really get into all of it, but this amazing Max Headroom, super rare piece, didn't even know it existed. We have the uh, Boxed Rude Ralph, the uh, Michael Jackson's uh, Michael's Pets. We have some incredible showbiz pieces that I was able to trade for early on, like the uh, Billy Bob and the Mitzi Mug couple additional showbiz figures, the amazing Mad Scientist gift, a uh, Chuck E. Cheese platter back there, another eyeball lamp. We got some Freddy pieces, some Pee Wee pieces, Monster in My Pocket, Garbage Pail Kids cheap toys. I did grab that Garbage Pail Kids shirt, some Soma monsters, some card display boxes. Just an amazing experience, and I'm sure I was barely able to even scratch the surface. That is all I got for you this time. As always, I want to thank you so much for watching the video. But until next time, stay safe, stay healthy. Love ya. Bye.